Oh, we all. The important we thing is to do, just act like na this. natural. Just, you have to go like this. See, oh, like this? Like this. Like this. Like this. Gary, oh. join us. Please. Say hello to all. Um, Gary's afraid of the show, picture show. show, show yeah. That will show up when he runs for no. president. No, no, no. <laughs> Whenever any of you run for president, these pictures will come back to haunt you. Oh, I know, and so will you. Gary's the only one smart enough to know that. <laughs> so, Ted, the only thing you have to worry about is just, like, you know, Presidential be yourself. Campaigns. All right? What? That's good. Be quiet. Fashion, met serious. Fashion, really? met That's how people you know you. Going to work? Okay. Yeah. We got enough of Will they be able to donate? I mean, I'm not get too close now. You don't want to frighten people. Is this is this the face okay. of a man that you give well, money to? Well, now, how much money do you expect to raise during a show? Why? I want to raise thousands. Now, well, what's going to happen world, if you do not raise okay. that money? We're going. Um, Where? I've got some steak knives that I got from late oh, night television. Well, They're in my bag. Them. Oh, sure. And I've got my friend here, and he and I are going to commit ritual suicide, basically, if, if I just don't come through. And, All right, uh, there you go. And that's that's what's going to happen if Ted does not raise the money necessary. So, you've heard it here. You've heard it here. What was that? What was that? <laughs> Who is this young man? Hold him. He's camera shy. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. WC. WC. Infidel. So many hang up. So many hung up because of your... We're going to follow him around all day long. <laughs> right. You're the one who has to put up watching this movie. Can you, uh... Can you tape some Michael performing? I suppose. You I don't suppose. want to have tape. All right. When do you go on? Uh, 3 o'clock. Hey, Ted, you missed the Channel 12 machine. Did you see it on Channel 12 machine? No, I don't have cable. Uh, no. I don't steal cable anymore. You don't steal cable? <laughs> no, not anymore. Why? What happened? Because they cut it off and I'm too lazy to cut the filter off. So, I don't steal it any less, I just don't steal it at all. You know all about that well, stuff, you don't, don't you, Eric? So, uh, Actually, Jim Dexter paid for this tape. So I haven't seen any, uh, oh, yeah, that's the any kind of sports all season. Accident. I mean, weird I had to go to the next game. Today. Yeah, weird accident. You know, I should pay for the cable because it's 25 bucks a pop. Really? Okay. Fantasy football games. Wow. Yeah. Go to any meta games? I'm gonna try. No, I'm busy at work. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go to the game on Wednesday. No. Watch out. He's looking at you. Yeah, I'm. In, I'm in a real baseball mood, and probably partially due to the rocket. Well, at least I'm not looking at him anymore. So. Tell me about yourself. When was the first time you listened to WUSB? I don't. <laughs> no, I do. Uh, when I heard about your show. How did you hear about my show? There were kids named Andrew. Andrew, where is good old Andrew? He's in Pennsylvania. He left today. He left today? For good? He's never coming back? Hopefully not. He moved away? <laughs> Not. Nah, She'll be back in a couple days. Why haven't you been at the radio time? He's hitting my call Saturday. Oh. He's so lazy. Here's, did he become lazy? 10, 15 years you've had this story. Yo, she was there when... Mom, it's me, my mom, my dad, you know, watching the game. Let me find four rings, so it looks like I'm doing something. There's, you know, basically anywhere where there's lots of people and not so many cops. Especially in the shows, a certain show. No, I'm still going through those papers. Yeah, yeah. Ah. When, they, when they have seats, you do. You know what I mean? Oh, I noticed yeah. that. It's kind of hard to kind of really start making Ron pictures. Ron Martin? Martin, he's our music director. He's oh, I know where he is. Norman's right around. He's in, I think, in the office. All right, he's in the office. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay, Eric, uh, yeah, I know where it is. Gonna go deal with Mike. Be sure to tape some of his performance and, uh... Okay. No okay, problem. thank you so much. Another phone's ringing. We gotta go. Okay. No, that's me, I guess. You do that earlier. No, that's not you. With the camera. Oh, my. <laughs> that's another one. Yes, uh, is this Rod there? Okay, Rod, you have a person oh, calling for Rod. office line two. Oh, All you're, right, you're no on hold. All right. Well, hopefully he'll pick up in a second here. What, the same person called back again? What happened? I don't know. That was weird. They, what, they, they said they were on hold? They're both for Rod. But they're not the same person, are they? Did you get Rod in the office? Yeah, he already told them. Oh, okay. He's on. Pick him up, then.
the fellow. Uh, no. If he's the guy that uh, that had the, the community stuff, so we were, yeah. Susan was going to give him Broadway tickets as well because it sounded like a 10-day free pass was actually 10 day, uh, a 10 event express pass. It's a hundred dollar check. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's not a <laughs> 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 Welcome to National Lesbian and Gay Radio Magazine. I'm Lucia Chappelle. And I'm Greg Gordon. Drug testing gets a community reality check. Gay and lesbian teachers unite, and everyone learns a thing or two. Tell me, Jim, what do you think about this jockey? Well, and more. I don't know, but if I were you, I'd look out. What? Managers would like to have their starting pitcher go five innings out here this afternoon, maybe a little further. You took my seat. 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 You took my so you have a bottom ring on today? Yeah. So I guess you had the new dimension in there, so I just need that stuff to you. Yeah. You can't get stuck on your city. You don't make it back. Uh-huh. Right now. Not on? No, the red light means it's not on. Yeah, yeah that's why it says recording. <laughs> Wait. PC computer is out to upgrade on the pair. Be back soon. Second. No, wrong box, Eric. Wait, wait, right, Eric. No, that, that's fine. I'll do that. box. You want the whole box? Hey, Mike, I hear you're doing a, a show about, uh, what, trains, railroads? Oh, come on. Tomorrow? Don't give me this crap, Jerry. <laughs> All I said speaking was... speaking to his, his, his friend, the PD from the... Uh, I'm sorry? He's speaking to his friend? He's going to in a minute. Yeah. All I said was that tomorrow for the train show, <clears throat> yes. you heard this before, this is rehearsed. <laughs> oh. I'm doing the train show with, <laughs> <laughs> with Gary Pecorino, who has always traditionally been known as <clears throat> the big pecker and mm -hmm. a wiener. <laughs> so I'm going to be stuck between a wiener and a pecker. It, it, it was funnier you. the first time. There was more laughter. This isn't a family, me a family show, is it? Really? I wouldn't think so. Although it depends upon... Perhaps it's a Manson family show. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know I haven't checked the exact family to whom we're sending this, but... Uh, mm. To whom we emanate... Jim, why don't you tell the folks the classic video that was made before video was, uh, was in vogue. Yes, you mean the orientation interview. Yes, with uh, Dan somebody as the uh, host, who actually went to my high school. Oh but my Jim, God, Jim will tell the story. Out. Jim will tell the story. Could you hand me those? Uh, well, back in the, the summer of 1972, during the orientation for new students here at the State University at Stony Brook, not to be confused with the State University of Stony Brook, <laughs> which occurred after the secession of Stony Brook from New York State. But anyway, Unless I can make the card over, in which case we'll have to see. Anyway, back in that summer, a video was made, without music, but a video just the same, uh, where uh, an interview took place between, I forgot the person's full name, Dan, someone who was involved with the so Dan didn't do the interview. Well, I thought he did the interview. Oh, was it, uh, gee, I, I don't really get him. He did the tape. But he taped it, somebody, and then somebody interviewed Norm Pruslin, <laughs> who discussed <laughs> WUSB. <laughs> Wide angle. <laughs> <laughs> 
During the interview, which was essentially a straight interview where information about the radio station was revealed to people who were interested, or even people who weren't interested if they happened to wander into the room where the video was showing. About eight or ten minutes. Right, about eight or ten minutes. During the course of the interview... Wide angle. Been a wide angle. Part then a wide angle of the interview. Right, exactly. It started out, I guess, as a medium shot between Norm and the interviewer. Well, well, then uh, the camera pulled back. When the camera after pulled about back, eight to ten minutes. <laughs> right, after about eight to ten minutes, I guess a fifteen minute interview. And while there, the interview is still going on. While the interview is still perhaps you might want to tell the story. I mean I mean that's objective, but maybe it'll make it easier because on Jim I think he's developing a no problem. Um, this is a dynamic kind of uh, video right here. While the interview was going on, during the wide angle shot, there appeared a third figure, <gasps> dressed in a dark trench coat, a round fedora-like rain hat. Oh. <laughs> and a pair of sunglasses indoors. Mm. And this figure appeared simply sitting in a chair, almost not moving. Wait a second. Weren't you eating a banana? I forgot about that detail. This figure was eating a banana at the time, but I think that this figure was motionless at first, then took out the banana and started to eat it nonchalantly. Mm. And the other two figures... The other two figures conti continued on as if nothing was going on, right, as if this person didn't exist, and there were those in the room who wished that this person didn't exist. No, I believe... But anyway, after a while, when the figure finished eating the banana, he continued sitting motionless for a brief time, and then gradually, almost imperceptibly at first, started to lean over, <laughs> forward, more and more and more as time went on, and finally fell off his seat altogether, to the raucous sounds of very, very disgruntled laughter. And that figure was you. You heard it here. Video confession number two from Jim Weaver. Of course, so everyone can hear. This is actual pledge transaction. Absolutely right. So we'll come back. Mr. Weiner, could you hand me a big pack of those guys? Yes, I know nonsense is a comedy. It's supposed to be very Lower that. Just a little bit. Just a wee bit. I'll do it. Who's radio? That's mine. Yes. I'm supposed to be. Okay, and can I just have your name? Yeah. E N. Is that uh, the PG from BAS? I believe so. Okay. I believe so. Okay, thank you very much. We should hear what he says. <laughs> right there. Okay, what is that? What is it? Oh, it's chicken. Lots of chicken. Lots of chicken. Cauliflower. <laughs> Pita bread. <laughs> Jerry Reamer. Oh, no, 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 no. A dangerous addiction. I think Jim should be getting help for this problem. Sticking things in his eye and talking to people who aren't talking to him. Goodbye. <laughs> So it's going to be Wednesday the 30th is the second choice. People that work here then. And actually, I, filled, I took over the Mike Uha spot, which was a 9 to 12 on Monday night. I did that for a while. Yes. And uh, then they said, Jim, how about the morning? I said, great. I love to be up early in the morning. And so I was. And then one morning, I can't find it. And Jerry can't find it. Oh well. Oh no, it's here. I know I put it in there. Oh well. It's here. I'll give you. I'll tell the story anyway. Can tell the story. I was. Um, oh, it's the first one. Yeah, there you go. I was going along doing doing the uh, doing the uh, this playing these kinds of things, Celtic folk, etc. And um, I came across a wonderful album uh, by a group known as the Bati Band. And uh, I thought I picked out the album because I thought it was a great title. It's Old Hag, You Have Killed Me. Oh, Old Hag, You Have Killed Me. <laughs> yeah, and I said, well, i got to listen to this. And I picked out one which um, 
Of course, it was in Gaelic, and I couldn't pronounce it. But thankfully, on this record, indeed, they they translated it in English, which means, and the song means, "Summer will come." Now, this was a rainy, disgusting morning, mm-hmm. spring morning, and uh, and I got, I think, I well, I got a call. I got a call from a listener, and say, and and it turned out it was, it was I said, Jim, the president of the Long Island Traditional <laughs> Music Association, is on the air. I'm like, oh my God. I, you know, right on the phone wanting to talk to you. Why don't yeah. I hope this is great? And uh, I, I was filled with fear. I said, oh, no, I pronounced something wrong. I did something brutally, you know, uh, wrong involving some sort of Celtic tradition, and I'm going to be flogged by fairies. are going to come and fly me to the <laughs> borderlands. Anyway, turns out it was Jerry Reamer on the phone. <gasps> and um, and uh, I'll let Jerry tell her half of the story. Oh, my gosh. Well, from my point of view, I had been listening to both Mikey and to Jim on the air who, for a who while. Was that? And to that Mikey Uhas guy and then oh. to Jim Dexter. And uh, Jim really helped me wake up in the morning and get off to work with the proper attitude. And I had just started training at the station, and uh, I was saying to people that I liked a lot. And Steve Steck said, well, you know, you should call some of those people because sometimes the person on the air doesn't know that people are listening and really appreciating what they're doing. Steve Speck being the operations director at the time. Yeah. So I started calling people, and that morning I woke up, and I didn't want to get out of bed. I saw the rain and the ook, and it just seemed like spring was never going to be here. Summer would never come. And into my ear came Chucky and Sara, which means summer will come in Irish. And I thought, what a brilliant piece of programming. I have to go celebrate this. And I called Jim, and he said, oh, no, I'm sorry I said it wrong. And I said, no, 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 I'm trying to tell you that I really liked what you played. And he went back on me, and he said, I just got yelled at because I did that wrong. No, no, no. So, and last week for my birthday, he played that song. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> what, a, what a memory, right? Five years later. Oh, how I nice. I thought that was pretty good. It's important, though, that you give us a call, just like Jerry did on that uh, awfully, brutally bad, bleak, blicky spring morning <laughs> five years ago and gave Jim some feedback. We need to hear from you now at 516-632-6901 and join some of the other folks uh, who have already donated to this radiothon that we're doing right now to raise to raise our antenna height so you can hear us a little better. And uh, mm-hmm. when we say better, we mean not only a clearer signal, but uh, also in, in terms of time, 10 and 20 years down the line here, so we don't get crowded out of our position on this FM band. Please give us a call at 516-632-6901. That's right. And our friends at Litmo, the Long Island Traditional Music Association, are uh, willing to put themselves on the line because uh, WUSC does a lot for folk music. And they've given us uh, five of their T-shirts, your choice of colors and sizes, for a $25 donation. Uh, Litmo season concert pass, and uh, that's a really valuable item. There are some great concerts coming up in the future, I know. And um, if you can't join the 90.1 Club, uh, Litma is also offering a pair of tickets to any Litma concert or dance that you'd like to attend with a $25 donation. And we have two Litma memberships. You can renew 